41 years, mm -hmm. you see that in, um, if you say, I want to tell an American story, it's right. when, right? Mm -hmm. And the people involved and what they look like would shift. Mm -hmm. So when we're talking about a biblical story, mm -hmm. just like how if we're talking about an, a, an ancient American story, right. we want to tell the story in that time period with their norms and their routines and their face. Right. And so when we come back into the Bible now mm -hmm. and we're looking into Africa, this is the story of black women. So right. we're going to be looking not at the sons of Ham, mm. but the daughters of Ham. That's right up my alley. <laughs> Right. Or you so, can use the history book names and you go Assyria, Babylon, Chaldea, and Ethiopia. Right? So let's walk into this together because some people don't really know where in the world are these weird, strange names um, places. I definitely want to know. <laughs> so the earliest kingdoms on the earth really were kingdoms, according to the Bible, mm -hmm. that came from Ham's oldest son, Cush. Okay. The absolute most famous person is his grandson, Nimrod, right? Mm, yeah. And um, Nimrod, that guy was, the Bible says, the first worldwide leader. This is the guy who literally built the first mega city, yes. right? Okay. Let's see if we can unpack this um, nations a little bit more, Okay. right? And so what you have is this. These Kush were the kingdom builder mm, people. Good. They they weren't the, the, they weren't necessarily the largest in population, but they were the dominant. They were what we call first world, right? If we're thinking today, right? Okay. You have, like you have the U.S. And, mm -hmm. and Britain and these first world countries. Well, right. biblically, in the ancient times, that's what the Kush people were. Wow. That's, that's where Syria, mm -hmm. Ethiopia, Mesopotamia mm -hmm. came from context mm -hmm. of that so, right mm -hmm. now we're going to focus not just on the Sinar kingdom we're going to actually narrow our focus for the first woman okay. and start to lay the groundwork of the nubian kingdom excellent this nubian kingdom now i'm gonna let you read some of these off right here tell me tell us some facts about the nubian kingdom yeah, well, based on the fact that we're doing the discover story about black women in the Bible, I couldn't wait until you got to this point because I want to see where I fit in. You tell me about the guys and the men and everything, which is great, but I want to know where I belong and how I fit into the story. But based on this slide that we're talking about now, the, the largest Nubian pyramid was for a woman. Queen of what is that name? Can you pronounce uh, that one for me? Shana Kadaketel. Ooh, whatever, yeah. whatever she was, just <laughs> to have a pyramid, the first pyramid built for her. That's amazing. So the reason for that is this: mm -hmm. that it was normal mm -hmm. if an, a, a Nubian king died, his queen would succeed him, and she would rule until she decides she either wants to retire, pass it on to her kid or not, but she was the official wow, ruler. Okay. This was unheard of, but this was normal in the Nubian society because they were a very much woman empowered society. And so that's the background that you have when you think of a Nubian mm -hmm. queen. I want you to think that this is not some passive person on the side. Excellent. Yep. She mm -hmm. is ruling an extremely wealthy, powerful empire with total control. I am so glad we're having this discussion because so many times as women, we we are devalued in so many places and in so many areas of our lives. So it's good to have history and background to kind of help us to, you know, reverse and reconnect so that we can go forward. What do you think about it? I agree. <laughs> and too often what, what I'm finding, and this is why I was so passionate about doing this study, is that... We, we get to this place to where people want to retell um, the actual stories mm -hmm. in a way that demotes the woman's role. Yes. And so, but historically, the women have had large impact on yes, society. That's right. And some civilization actually elevate women is as strong leaders and, yes. and, and, and thought leaders and spiritual leaders and, and political leaders. Mm -hmm. And so what you have is that was normal for the Nubian society. Nubian um, today mm -hmm. is what we would consider Sudan and Ethiopia. Okay. Yeah, Ethiopia. Definitely. So now that we've gotten this context, right, mm -hmm. and you understand the Nubian people, you know where mm -hmm. they're located, you know their politics, you know how pro-woman they are, mm -hmm. we're going to introduce you to the first black woman. 
Yes. And this particular woman, her name is Makeda. And she's wealthy too, according to this wife. So she is the queen yeah. of Sheba. She's a Nubian queen, mm -hmm. right? What that means, and you got to get this, is that her country is a country that is known for having a lot of gold yes. and a lot of resources. So she had wealth, she had an army, she had full independence as the ruler of that nation. Yeah, okay. So when she enters this biblical story, mm -hmm. because she heard that there's this up and coming place called Israel yeah. that is starting to, trying to be first world, because I know we think a lot of times of Africa today, and we mm -hmm. think, you know, that's a third world country. Mm -hmm. At this point in history, though, they were the first world yeah, country. Definitely. Right? Mm -hmm. And so the Israelite nation that's coming up, mm -hmm. she heard rumors, and she's like, that can't be true. Yeah. We're the biggest and best. So she actually went on this kind of like pilgrimage to go check this guy she out. To know. And it wasn't a close yeah. trip. They're talking months, if not over a year, okay. for her to travel from where she's at there with the entourage that she brought. Yeah. And when I say she brought, I mean, the Bible says that nobody's ever brought more spices mm -hmm. and medicine because medicine is, spices is not just seasons for your food. It was the the healing balms and, okay. and, and the herbs and the things you did if you were sick and what mm -hmm. you rub on the wound. All of these stuff is what she introduced, but she brought it in larger quantities than they've ever seen. Yeah. She sounds, you know, I've never known that Queen of Sheba, I've read so much about her in the Bible, I didn't know she was Nubian. Is that how you pronounce yeah. it, Nubian? So, and, and this goes back to because we oftentimes mm -hmm. don't connect the place mm -hmm. that the Bible references to the, the, to the historical context. Right. We don't always understand who the Bible is referencing. True, true. So mm -hmm. if Sheba is one of the Nubian places, King, um, king countries or nations mm -hmm. that's part of what you call the Nubian kingdom. Right. And depending on the time period that you're talking about, they either control portions or they control the, the whole okay. of like that side of the world, yeah. <laughs> really, at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And so now this is why I, I'm bringing this up. If you understand that her Nubian traditions mm -hmm. meant she can be an independent strong woman really now then you will get why she felt confident enough mm -hmm. to challenge solomon yes which the gotcha. world was saying was the wisest man on the planet yeah. she showed up to check him out that's right because she felt she had the qualifications and had the the courage and the the, the right mm -hmm. to challenge him and she challenged him until she felt confident that what he said right. is true. But it, this is so important because I'm hoping that our listeners will connect, especially the woman, because we, we've been dumbed down so much from all angles and different society, you know, and around the world. But we need to find our worth. And I think by going back and, and doing the research and connecting with folks like you who've done the research to, to share the stories of our worth and our value, we can now stand up in our place in our families, in the community, mm -hmm. in the workplace, where, wherever we are. Not with a bodacious, um, arrogant way, but knowing that we are valuable. We're, we're you know, we we have worth. Yeah. I agree, <laughs> and I think when when I think we rob women of the ro proper role God has for them, mm -hmm. um, we demean them when we use religion and politics yes. and culture yes, to yes. say they should be small mm. and tell a small story. When in fact, this woman changed the course of Israel's story by in introducing them to things that mm -hmm. they hadn't been exposed to. And now, the Bible does not say she left pregnant. <laughs> but the Egyptian, of, um, in Egyptian, the Ethiopian official book of records and, and historians, um, is the Judaeus, the, the I said Judaeus, no, the Israelite historians, okay, the Muslim historians, mm -hmm. all are in agreement. She left pregnant. <laughs> Ooh, sound like a tabloid. And huh? not only that. <laughs> It, um, her son, right, uh, Menelik the mm first, -hmm. actually became the first member of a new line of royal dynasty, and that is the legacy that came out, and that's the impact her encounter with Solomon has. Mm -hmm. But she is not the only black woman in the Bible, right? So we're gonna.